We've been hearing the 13th chapter of Matthew these last two weeks, a chapter which is entirely devoted to parables. This is the way Jesus taught the people. He didn't teach them like the priests and deacons learn from philosophy lectures and theology papers to read. Jesus spoke in very simple terms because that's what his audience would have appreciated. They would have understood. They love stories. And so he told them stories. And I imagine Jesus must have thought long and hard to come up with examples of how he could describe the indescribable, how he could talk about the kingdom of God, which was beyond anybody's experience, anybody's ability even to imagine. And not only did he want to describe the kingdom, he wanted to motivate the people he was talking to to want to go there, to be a member of the kingdom. And so we spoke about a treasure in a field, and he spoke about a valuable pearl. His audience could relate to those things. They might have even known someone who perhaps when plowing his field might have uncovered a treasure that had been buried many years before, perhaps by the previous owner, and then forgotten about. They probably had seen merchants who were selling precious gems. They knew what precious stones were like. And so Jesus told them in, in very plain language, look, the kingdom of God is so valuable that you need to use all of your resources to get there, even if it amounts to spending your very self. And whatever you think you're losing in that deal, you will be repaid many times over. He reminded us uh, at other parts of the gospel. And so we get that. We get that there is something called the kingdom of God, which is more valuable than anything we can imagine. More valuable than rooms full of gold and silver, more valuable than all the fame and the power and the prestige that we all yearn for. More wonderful, more amazing, more beautiful than anything we can imagine. Our challenge is that we're so wrapped up in our daily lives and our concerns with, <coughs> excuse me, and our concerns with work and family, daily chores, the things we worry about, that we don't have time, or we don't take the time to think about what really matters, what's really important, what's really valuable. The treasure above all treasures life with God. So Jesus, I think, is challenging us today to go beyond our daily routines, to go beyond the limitations of what we normally think about and talk about and work at. He wants us to get in touch with this reality we can't see, but because Jesus always tells the truth we believe that the kingdom of God is real. More real than anything we can imagine. A place where there are riches and wealth, joy, eternal praise of God, blessings upon blessings, ecstasy beyond anything we can imagine. A place where we are known and we know. We know others as they know us. And we're loved for who we are, exactly as we are. Jesus wants us to desire this destiny 
above all others. The first reading gives us, gives us an example, I think, of the way to think and the way to act to get into the kingdom. So we have Solomon, who, as a youth, the story is that he was only 12 years old when he inherited the kingdom from his father David, the kingdom of Israel. And he must have had fear, he must have had a lot of self-doubt. How could a boy like him rule this fractious and difficult people? And we might, we might excuse him for taking the easy way out, saying, you know, let's just wait till I'm older. Or let's get some advisors to kind of give me what to do and say. We could excuse that. We probably think that way too. But he doesn't take the easy way out. He asks God for a gift to benefit the people so that he can serve them well. He doesn't ask for wealth, doesn't ask to defeat his enemies. He doesn't ask for political success and power. He asks for wisdom. And God seems pleased to give it to him. And although Solomon was many centuries before Jesus, <coughs> and certainly did not know about the kingdom of God that Jesus was describing, yet he was acting in a way to get to that kingdom. And then in the gospel, we hear about two individuals who recognize great value that's in front of them and sell everything that they possess to have that value for themselves. The one man, we're told, rejoices as he sells everything to buy that field. Now contrast that example with another story in the gospel. You remember the one about the rich young man who approaches Jesus and says, Lord, what do I have to do to inherit the kingdom? And Jesus tells him, the only thing you have to do, because you've, you've led an exemplary life, is just sell what you have. Sell that and then come follow me. And we're told that these, this rich young man was too attached to his wealth, and so he went away sad. So one of the paradoxes of the kingdom of God you can keep all your wealth, all your earthly treasures, but you'll be sad. On the other hand, if you give up your attachments to all of them, you will have joy. But there's a second aspect to the kingdom of God that Jesus also talks about today. He tells us, and we hear this in other stories from the gospel too, everyone is invited to be a part of the kingdom. The dragnet brings everybody in. The good and the bad, the saints and the sinners, the ones that desire the kingdom, and the ones who couldn't care less about the kingdom. And they're all brought together. And then comes that terrible, final, ultimate, sifting of one group from the other. And now there's no going back. No more second chances. Jesus is telling us that to belong to the kingdom of God, we must be worthy of the kingdom. And to help us understand what we need to do, we have the saints all imperfect people like us. The difference was, though, that they accepted God's grace. They used their gifts for the service of others, and they were single-minded in not letting anything get between them and the kingdom. They were all very different, one from another, but they had that in common. Nothing would separate them from Jesus and his kingdom. 
And so to sum this up, Jesus talks about two aspects of the kingdom of God. First aspect, more valuable than anything we can imagine. And he recommends that we pay whatever cost we need to pay. That we give up our pride, that we give up our ego attachments to power and wealth and prestige. All of that is transient. And instead devote ourselves to what is real and eternal. What will last. And then the second aspect of the kingdom is that we have to be worthy. We have to live lives that are good and holy lives with God at the center. Now by itself, we probably have no chance of doing any of this. But thank God, thank God, that all we have to do is ask with a sincere heart, Lord, bring me to your kingdom. Show me how to get there. And we will receive whatever grace we need to accomplish that. So I'm hoping that that will be our prayer for this Mass today. Lord, make me worthy to enter your kingdom. Amen.